if the crickets are sounding their mate alarms off, it's not my fault. It happens every single night. And uh, instead of having this thing closed, it would be better to have it open like this, just for video purposes so it won't be too boring. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Nigel Mill. In this video, I hit my time of three years on YouTube. Not, no important milestones to speak of, but I think it's a, a, a yearly tradition that I do right now in my channel. So, what I do in these kinds of videos, I take some questions from people that I know, they ask them to me so I could answer them back in a form of a video for all of you to know a little more about me or just want to hear my opinions on some things. This is another video like that. Nothing special, just three year mark. Anyways, here we go. I am going to list some of the questions that they asked me and I'm going to relay them to you with some other videos of mine that I will show you right now. Anyways, stop being weird, Nigel Mill. Did I say <laughs> did I say my intro? Hope, probably not. Anyways, it don't matter. I have like 400 videos with my intro on it, so it don't matter. Anyways, let's get right to it. Number one. How do you deal with raging in games? Do you even rage at all? The answer to that is... Depends. In gaming, it is very hard for me to rage because I'm just so good. <laughs> I'm just so damn good at games. But there is one evidence of a video that I've made on my channel that it does relay one of my one of my tipping points of a rage, if you can even call it that. It in perspective, that video that I made is probably as close as you can get to seeing me rage. <laughs> that video for perspective is on my Sekiro Shadows Die Twice playthrough very long ago. It was in 2019 uh, that it was released, right? No, the, the last updated on 2019, so yeah, uh, close to that. September 2 or something like that was uh, the time tag on the video, but that video was for perspective. This one, part 27, ultimate super hard mode activated. Uh, it's the semi-last episode I ever did for Sekiro on the channel, and I remember that I needed to... F I didn't need to fight two bosses at the same time that were so cheaty and combined their attacks with each other, and then sent me to hell with their pikes and then slashed me up in the back with one of their humongous odachi swords and katanas and then they coordinated more of their attacks and they left me with really uh, uh, a state of close to raging but not quite raging i get angrier than that uh, i got angrier than that in the past but now I learned to control my emotions a lot uh, better since I grew older and older and older and older and I keep getting older. So yeah, I kind of control my uh, my rage emotions and I probably never ever 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 display them on my videos except for that one which is not a rage but it's close to it. Anyways, next one. Number two. You play on PC, yet use a controller most of the time. You don't like playing mouse and keyboard? The answer to that is... I think I said it before. I grew up with playing with controllers and that is what is most familiar to me. Some people say that keyboard and mouse is way better for uh, first person shooters and I agree. It is better because a thumbstick is not the same as having your whole hand 
moving around the mouse and then making very very precise aiming on with the mouse and keyboard but with a controller there is some with the thumb there are areas of error that you either go too far or too little in your aiming so on those games I guess the appeal of a mouse and keyboard does enchant me, <laughs> but no. I'd rather play with a controller because it's easier and it's more familiar. With a keyboard I have like 27 buttons to worry about <laughs> and I don't have the appropriate space right here to maneuver my mouse accurately enough. Of course, I did play with mouse and keyboard on XCOM Chimera Squad in the past, but uh, how do I say it? it? It's not a fast action paced game. It's a tactical turn based game. So I have all the time in the world to position my mouse where I want it, how I want it, when I want it. Did I ever say that? <laughs> so it, it's not high action paced. So I don't I don't play with mouse and keyboard if I can use a controller. Uh, and plus I don't have the appropriate space for it so no I like playing with mouse and keyboard but I don't I choose if I had a choice I play with a controller number three what's your editing setup like I mean how do you edit your videos lucky for you I have some videos that uh, I have that I'm about to show you how it's uh, how I do them at least which is uh, how do I say it, it is uh, a very good setup for me not the best not the most efficient but it is a good setup for me right now all right what I do is similar to this right I record on my OBS I record it as a I have a laptop and then I have a desktop the laptop records these things the the green screen that you see right here my face with my voice that's what I recorded my laptop my desktop records the other thing the the gameplay of the the the, the videos right so I have two separate machines recording at the same time because it is more how do I say it is more effective for me having the gameplay and the webcam and the voice of mine be separate from each other so I have a much 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 easier time editing them and I have a much easier time separating them in the editor if I wanna uh, if I wanna input another video of it I could just input it and then leave the webcam there or snip uh, a part of the webcam and then make it all uh, empty because I forgot to put uh, a section of the video in like in Indivisible Part 1 where I in the first my first playthrough I skipped the cutscene accidentally but in my second playthrough I you know just inputted that because there was no sound and I got to restore the cutscene that I lost before so how do I uh, edit right that, that that was how I record now how do I edit I mean like I said I have two main files the webcam with the audio with the green screen and then the gameplay video with the audio of the gameplay right and then I make an mp3 out of my webcam video with a program called audacity right why do I do this it's because I got tired of manually leveling my peaks you know uh, from the mic microphone that I use sometimes it peaks accidentally sometimes it's too quiet and 
what I do is copy the the file, the video that I have with my face and my audio, put it in Audacity and make some edits like this. Just go to files, go to open, let's say I wanted to edit uh, Indivisible part 1 of of my thing. Look at that. It peaks a lot. So what I do, see uh, sometimes, I think this is one of the videos where it was too loud but nothing was too quiet, I think. I think it was. Wait a moment. Is this one of them? Well, well whatever. Sometimes these voice lines, voice waves, are either way too big or sometimes it's way too small, depending how I record during that night, right? In this, it tells me that it's way too high, my voice. So, instead of going to my editor and then manually uh, handpicking, adjusting my levels, instead, I do this. If, if there are parts where it's too quiet, I amplify my thing. Like so. That is way too exaggerated, but you get what I mean. If, if parts of the, like the, uh, these parts right here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, these part right here, if I talk way too low in a video, then that needs to be ramped up so that everybody can hear it, right? So, what I do, let's reset that because there are no uh, quiet parts in this, but this is telling me that it is way too high for video, right? So, instead of manually uh, editing my audio in the editor that I have, I limit it. There's an option. Oh, I, I, I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't see that option. Wait a moment. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to resize this, but there you go. Uh, first, I select it, go to effects, and then I amplify it, right? With whatever I want, how high I want it to be in so that the quiet parts can be ramped up. That's what I explained later, uh, in the past. Then I go to effects again and then there's a, uh, an option that says limiter at the way bottom of it and then I set the limiter, this is my preset by the way, and then I just do that and then wait until everything completes in Audacity and then when when it's over and done with boom there you go the video has been limited like the 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 high parts have been cut down and leveled throughout the entire video so i don't have any peaks going up in my editing so i have less uh to work with in my editor right that's how i do my videos i create two videos, my face with my audio, the green screen and then the gameplay video, and then do an mp3 version of my face and audio and green screen <laughs> and make this, edit. You know, I limit the audio so I don't have to worry about uh, peaking or uh, soft voices in the video that I'm about to show you how I edit, right? So here we go. Alright, after I made those uh, three steps, you know, recording the two videos and then making the mp3 of my video, I go to Hit Film Express, which is my editor, you know, it's free, it's simple enough, it's, you know, it's easy to work with, but, but, if you're planning to get this, a warning. HitFilm Express's uh, latest updates have been extremely buggy as of late. They they freeze, they crash a lot more than usual. So much so that I just uninstalled the update and then installed the thing again, but with uh, the previous versions. 
This is HitFilm Express 15, which it looks cool and it functions better than the updates. <laughs> so, this is what I do. I just, to make my videos, I just make a 1080 preset of the thing, right? A 1080 preset of the, you know, the video that I'm about to export into YouTube. So, the three files that I told you about, there you go. This is my webcam, this is my gameplay video, and this is my audio. And my normalized audio, my limited audio that doesn't have any peaks on it, right? So, what I do is just do the editing, you know? Just do the normal editing that I always do. Uh, resize the thing, uh, make it smaller, put it in a corner, whatever I need to do to make the video and whatever, right? But, if you can see here, there are some peaks right there, a peak right there, and some peaks in there, right? So that's why I need the MP3 version of it that replaces the audio from the webcam video and there you go. Everything is higher, but I can just uh, decrease the volume like this and everything will be fine and dandy because I don't have any peaks in, in this version of the video, right? So that's how I do my videos. Webcam, gameplay, MP3. Jeez, I've been talking for 20 minutes. I never shut up, do I? <laughs> Anyways, that's how I do my videos. It's a long process, but I, you know, I have like 400 videos with that tactic. <laughs> so, it's doing I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that since I have uh, the, the, the videos and audios uh, separated, and I could just move this thing anywhere I wanted, uh, I could edit extremely fast, I could put the green screen crap right there, like so, and done. That's it, and I could move this around wherever I want. So, since it is separate, I get the background of the game, and I get the green screen of my video, and I get a limited version of my voice audio which is not going to be peaked anymore or uh, it's not going to be uh, soft anymore so I have a great advantage with this because it gives me more, it gives me more control over my editing all right so next one you up for collaborating with other youtubers in the future yes that would be amazing that would be fire I would uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really that popular in YouTube, but uh, once I get things going, if I get things going, then yeah, sounds <laughs> sounds like a great uh, a video to make together. So, uh, five favorite genre of video games. Go. <laughs> so. My favorite, I don't know if you noticed, is action, action adventure games. I think that's pretty clear by the content that I have on my channel. <laughs> so, but I, but I have, yeah, you know, I'm cool with others like RPG games, role playing, uh, platformer, 2D, 3D, FPS, first person, third person. I don't, I don't care. I like them all. The, the ones that I don't play enough to like are competitive fighting games, which that is lost on me. Like, I get my ass beat every single time and, you know, I, I try to get better, but there's always one asshole in the internet who is always a tryhard and he flawless victories me to hell and back and then I feel bad because I'm playing with a level 900 and 9999 player and 
I'm just starting to get into the competition, you know, but then I get my ass beat. I guess my ass handed to me and then I quit competitive fighters. I just play for the story. And racing games. I don't play racing games that much. But, you know, my favorite genre would be action, adventure, and RPG. So that's a, a way of saying that I have no favorites. <laughs> so next. Are you still looking forward to continue? Are you still looking forward to continue on this YouTube career? Yes. Though, you know, sometimes I have my off days, I go on a very long break and say, huh, what's the point of making videos if nobody really, you know, cares? <laughs> but uh, that's the wrong mentality, right? I, you know, I'm a human, and just like every other human, I have positive mentality, then it goes to negative, then it goes to positive, so those are my off days, you know, when I start thinking, eh, I'm, go I'm gonna stop making videos for two weeks or something, and then just relax and play games by myself, and think about, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, and all that stuff, but, like I said, 400 plus videos in on YouTube, <laughs> so I'm not getting tired of it, so Yeah, I guess I'll continue and see where it goes Next Aside from your character, what's your personal favorite character in Cyberpunk? You know A game specific question, right? <laughs> so uh. Uh, I am a very complicated man when you say to me what is your favorite this, what is your favorite that, what is your favorite that thing, I always say that it is complicated and I have no favorites, right? So this is going to be the same. <laughs> I'm going to give you three characters that I that are considered my favorite, even though there's no favorites. It's just, I like him a lot. So, I would put Panem. I would put... Uh, Johnny, <laughs> for heaven's sake, or for hell's sake. I don't know why I choose Johnny, but I'll tell you in a moment. And the third one... Ooh, gotta be a tie with... Mm. Misty or Judy? Ooh, man. Uh... Sorry. Sorry, Misty, but I gotta say Judy. <laughs> so, those three, right? Why? Because I'll give you the, the my reasonings for it. So, why not Jackie? Because CD Projekt Red fucked around with the character, they killed him way too quickly, and... Why should, why should Jackie be my favorite character if you didn't let me spend enough time with him to develop my relationship with Jackie? So, there you go. That's my answer why Jackie is not there. Now, for Panem, come on, she's badass as hell. She has a freaking basilisk on her cap. She becomes the leader of the Nomad Aldecaldos. She always goes straight into the battle, and you know she's actually she actually has a plan for going in. It's not like she is reckless most of the time. <laughs> most of the time she's not, but uh, she plans accordingly, and she has firepower to back it back things up when she goes into action. And because she is funny as heck, with the banter between V and between Panem, it is funny as heck, so I like that uh, dynamic duo. Now for Judy, well, I put Judy because she's the, you know, she was the girlfriend character that I chose to be with on my playthrough, and 
She has a very, very, very <laughs> tragic backstory with Evelyn. She... She sound... The, her voice actress... Oh! Sounds so cool. And, you know, because I got to have a fun night with her. <laughs> so, yeah. And her because of her uh, quest, the relationship quest uh, when you go underwater, is beautiful as hell, and it's very unique, and it got me. Well, on my, on my first playthrough, it didn't get me because I was so frustrated with the lighting mechanics and the lighting freakouts everywhere underwater, and it ruined the experience for me, but on my second and third try, when I did my, you know, new games, then everything behaved and, you know, it was a pleasant experience, but woo, that first one ruined it for me. But, you know, she sounds cool, she is cool herself, and because uh, she's my girlfriend <laughs> in, the, in, my, uh, in my playthrough. So, why Johnny? I hate to say it, but he's a good character. <laughs> so... You know, he is the person, or engram, or ghost, whatever you want to call him, that is with you 24-7, always in your mind, and sometimes pops in the universe that you're in. You're seeing him, and nobody else can see him, 24-7, always, and you're merged, uh, you know, as V and Johnny, you're merged into a single consciousness so to speak, because you are literally merging together. So, for good, for the bad, not the good, the bad, <laughs> for the bad, you are merging together. And, you know, he has a very good backstory, but then he tries to kill you, then he's a reckless asshole who does whatever the hell he wants, and goddamn the consequences, you know, he doesn't care about the consequences at all. He just does what he wants to do when he wants to do them. And that's the part that I say, fuck Johnny, just let me do my goddamn things, will ya? <laughs> so... But he is a good character. And like I said, he's with me 24-7. So I have the most exposure with that character out of every other character in the game. So, that's why. Next! Do you have a favorite Resident Evil game? Also, who's your most like villain in it? Man. Okay, so. First of all, res favorite Resident Evil game is still Resident Evil 4. I had, uh an inkling a competition between Resident Evil 4 and Village but then I play after Village I played 4 again and uh, yeah, I just love 4 a lot more I'm sorry <laughs> so even though Village was a close competitor 4 still won in the end and villain pff, I have no idea what uh, oh uh, I have actually an idea Wesker Albert Wesker because, well, he's been the main villain for a long time on Resident Evil, and he's cool. <clears throat> Although, Resident Evil... Oh my! Where's my water? Although... Ah, although, <laughs> Resident Evil 5 was... A super action game that veered way too heavy on the action part of the game than anything else then it was not such a good game for me but uh, I gotta say this Whew. Sheva Whew. Whew. my <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> so uh, yeah Wesker it is not Lady Dimitri schools. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I am not. A f I don't have that fetish that every single Resident Evil fan in the universe has. That it is okay to be stepped on 
by a gigantic four times the mass of a normal lady with high heels puncturing you in the goddamn chest and uh, telling you you are a bad boy Ethan or something like that. I am not one of those people. So not Dimitriscus. Even though Dimitriscus is a good villain character, she was underused in the village from my perspective because all of the advertisements of Resident Evil Village and I mean all of them all the trailers focused so heavy on Lady Dimitriscus they focused so hard on her but you know especially when you're speedrunning the game you only will see Lady Dimitriscus like I'd say if you were speedrunning the game, you would only see her for about 30 minutes in total or something, even less with speedrunning. You would see her in a normal gameplay like just 40 uh, 50 minutes of screen time only and you know all the advertisements went very focus heavy on her and you know, they just didn't have that much exposure for her in the game, so... But Wesker, on the other hand, had a lot more in multiple games, so... And he's kinda cool even though he's a little bit cringy at times, but... He is, you know, the main villain, so... Yeah, Wesker is my favorite one, I guess. Most players like to collect figurines from their game characters. Do you do the same? Yes, I have a, a video of uh, Unbox Cackle Demon on my channel. That's the first figurine that I ever bought. It was overpriced. It, the shipping cost me the same as the item, which was 60 something dollars. Thank you, Bethesda. Thank you for the shipping. Uh, extreme shipping up price on that. Thank you so much, Bethesda, for that poor attempt at shipping price yeah. <laughs> but you know I got it I kind of had to pay like twice the price of the goddamn figurine that I was buying but hey I got it so it is there well until you know I get tired of it when I sell it or it maybe there you know and maybe in the future I'll buy a glass case with <laughs> uh, a huge amalgamation of figurines so I have choices, not like those damn microtransactions, NFTs and bullshits that they're offering nowadays. <gasps> Anyways... <laughs> if you were to have a pet, what kind of pet would it be? I love dogs, right? They're, they are your loyal companion, they are your bestest bestest friends forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. No matter what you do, they will always love you, right? Unconditional love from dogs. And you can teach them neat tricks like lie down, roll over, bark, <laughs> things like that. Uh, high fives, whatever, right? So you can train them a pretty big deal. And they're fluffy. Most of them are fluffy and, you know, when you pet them, you're actually petting yourself too because you're getting something in return. The fluffiness of the uh, dog <laughs> that you're petting. Oh, maybe one day I will get, uh, I don't know, a Bernice Mountain Dog. I really like those. I had a dog before called Jack. He was a Labrador Retriever. I had it since he was very very young. My parents gifted to me on Christmas Day, I think. And for a lot of years, it was the best dog. But unfortunately he died a long time ago. But uh, favorite pet, I don't know, a dog or a cockatoo. Because I tell you, those cockatoos are freaking crazy as hell and it would supplement my, I mean complement my personality since I am mostly quiet and serious most of the time then the cockatoo would just go crazy ham and start screaming everywhere and puff up its crest and you know 
it's a nice compliment <laughs> to my uh, personality and he will say fuck <laughs> he will say fuck all of the time i'm gonna teach it to say that all of the freaking time <laughs> next so you say you're a fan of Dark Souls, are you looking forward to the next game in the series? Yes, Elden Ring, you should watch it. Uh, it's coming out February... Uh, 20 something, the game. The game is coming out 20, uh, 20 something February this month. But the video that I'm going to release on YouTube is going to be like one or two or three days after it releases because you know I need to have time in the night I need to set up my uh, recording space I need to edit them and then I need to upload them thank goodness that uh, our house actually had a new service provider and it's using uh, optic fiber right so the internet is super fast and I can upload the videos extremely quick so uh there's a plus in that so i don't have to worry about spending six hours or 12 hours uploading it to youtube yeah that's how long it took me before and i just have to wait like one two hours three hours only to upload one video so it is a lot faster now but i still got need to separate time to record than to edit and the editing is not fast at all <laughs> because it needs to render uh, 30 minutes or hour long videos on uh, they need to render at a HD 60 FPS format so that takes a lot of time well last question is I like playing co-op games with my girlfriend <laughs> like let's say Cuphead you you're trying to show off here with your girlfriend and playing games together and me being lonely <laughs> anyways <laughs> like let's say cuphead the streets of rage 4 good game etc etc and we have fun even if we lose at times uh dot <laughs> but i've seen many co-op gamers just lose it rage between each other blaming each other even breaking up in a hilarious fit of rage what's your take on this <laughs> first of all oh hair in my mouth <laughs> that's the first of all second of all <laughs> uh that was funny i can imagine it right now <laughs> so uh okay so what's my take on a uh, couple co-op gamers okay co-op couple that's what I call them how lucky of you co-op couples to have someone you care about playing games with you <laughs> anyways yeah uh, I, I I have actually seen uh, freakouts like humongous freakouts on YouTube uh, the girl gets so angry at the guy for either uh, beating her in a fighting game or not uh, doing exactly what she wanted her co-op partner to do in a game like like uh, it said, like Streets of Rage 4 or Cuphead. Ugh. And they just freak out, right? They throw the controller, they break it, they grab the console, unplug it from the uh, power cord, they fucking smash it in the ground in a fit of rage and then leave the room and the guy is just like... <laughs> so like, what the heck just happened? Dude? Yeah. Okay, two versions that I on my take, right? The first version is... For the girls, if you see a guy rage, just dump him. <laughs> He's not, you know, he he clearly has some anger issues if he keeps raging and keeps uh, fighting and keeps um, uh, making a huge speculation uh, on his behavior just because it's a game. I know that games could uh, resurface uh, surface uh, emotions. And, you know, games like co-op games and very hard games like Cuphead, which most people rage for, 
yeah, they blame each other, and they get mad at each other, but, you know, if... Either do one of two things. Either don't play co-op with them anymore, or just break up with their ass, <laughs> because the first one, you can separate, you know, your times. The, you know, the guy, the ragey person's time, and the calm person's time, right? You separate it. You never do co-op because it is an inconvenience. Your your play styles do not match, right? So that or just break up with them because if they if they keep raging, if they keep getting into a fit of rage, if they if they get angry over simple little things, or just because of a game, they physic if they go to the point of physically hurting the other person, nah, that is a huge no no, no siri or madam, no, uh uh, that is where you need to draw the line and say, you know what, fuck off. Second uh, thing on my take is uh, what do I wanted to say? You know, uh, you know, like I said, it's just a game, and maybe you could look at it like that. And you know, once you get a mad at another person, at your co-op partner, just apologize to them later. You know, if you really didn't mean it. Then just apologize, you know, uh, people get into a fit sometimes and it's uncontrollable. Some people do not know how to control their emotions. A lot of people don't know how to control them. And, you know, just be adults with each other, right? Don't be a punk-ass bitch that just thinks that they're the top of the world and they get everything they want because they think they can get everything they want and say everything they need to say because they think they can get away with it. So those kinds of people just just don't get together with them really. It's it's a for in my opinion it's more of a pain than a benefit if that is your uh, couple, you know. So <laughs> it Games are a place to have fun. Games are meant as an escape from the real world to go into a virtual world that you have a lot of fun, a lot of entertainment, that you get to know characters, that you get to play as a character to have fun in this space that it, the game resides in. Uh, it, it's it's just an escape from the real world's troubles, right? Now, no games like Cuphead that are super hard for casual gamers. You will get pissed, you will get angry, and you know, a lot of the times you cannot stop it. But like I said, do not let it go too far. You know, too far being insults to each other. Calling them uh, like hurtful, uh, like hurtful names. That, that, you know, like let's say out of the ordinary. You know, like uh, some couples say, "Oh, you bitch," or <laughs> "Oh, you a hole," like but in a loving way, because for some, you know, uh, some people just use those words, but they don't mean anything hurtful, harmful by it. But if they act out of whack and say something completely uh, out of place and, you know, like if, with their demeanor, if they say it in a different way, that's a red flag. Those, those two. And the third one being physical harm. That is the line that you... that is way too far. That is the maximum line, right? If that happens, get away from that person, <laughs> because if they can inflict harm on you while playing a game, think of the the messed up mind that they have. You know, it's it, bad, hard to believe it, but yeah, there's some people like that. Anyways, I've been talking for 50 minutes, <laughs> so 
Uh, that's it. It's 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, happy three years, me, of YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I'm going to continue playing Indivisible right now. If I can. Where if I set up my things correctly. I will play Indivisible, continue playing it. And then... Yeah, let's see... I'm doing Mega Man X right now, the Legacy Collection 1. And... Those are my plans, you know, Indivisible and Mega Man X. When... The, the biggest AAA that I'll feature on my channel would be Elden Ring. It's coming up next. You know, like one of my questions that I answered uh, from from software. That's going to be the big game on February that I will uh, put out to YouTube. Of course, <laughs> hopefully, I will finish either Mega Man X or Indivisible before Elden Ring comes out. Because that is a whole monster on its own. I'm going probably going ugh, probably going to die a lot in it. Even though I've played the Soul series a lot. So expect me to know more than an average player. But maybe a little less than a pro player. But, yeah, we'll see. I, I have confidence in my abilities, what am I talking about? I am the best. I'm the awesomest of Souls players. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Thank you everybody so much for watching this three year anniversary video. <laughs> I hope to see you on the next year.